Think about science and what comes to mind. Well, maybe laboratories, microscopes, serious men in white lab coats. Well, this science story doesn't look anything like that. It's about an experiment where almost any of us could have lent a hand. In the spring of 2008, a Washington University vehicle drove into Klondike Park on the Missouri River in St. Charles County. A biology professor, a postdoctoral researcher, and three undergrads were on their final trip of the season into the woods. Their mission? Pulling weeds. You usually think of lawns and gardens and farm fields as having weeds, but forests and other natural areas have them as well. Although here, they are called invasive plants. One of the most common and toughest to control is garlic mustard a plant originally native to Europe. Um, it was first introduced to Long Island in the late 1800s, and it spread pretty much throughout the entire U.S. It's made it all the way to the West Coast. But was it purposely brought here? Garlic mustard sounds like something that would be edible and, and something you, you could flavor things with. It's interesting. It actually was brought here on purpose as an herb. Um, and, and, you know, mustard is because it's in the mustard family, and garlic is referring to its flavor. If you pick one of these off and you crush it in your hands, mm -hmm. and you give it a sniff. I crush it really hard. You'll smell garlic. Yeah, but not real strong. No. You'd have to you'd have to use a lot. <laughs> no. You'd be well, better off using like garlic. Said, yeah, you'd be better <laughs> off using garlic, and, and in order yeah. to make anything that tastes good, you have a lot of basil. And it comes out pretty easy. You don't need a PhD oh, yeah, to pull weeds. But doctors yeah. Tiffany Knight and Eleanor Pardini have been doing this as part of a carefully designed three-year study to determine the best way to manage the spread of garlic mustard. Assuming that parks don't have enough people or hours to pull every single plant, is there an efficient way to get the upper hand? Every battle plan needs a map, and that's how they started, using GPS technology and little orange flags. What we're doing is um, mapping the distribution of the garlic mustard in each of the sites, and we're taking some data on distribution, which is where it occurs, and then also on abundance, which is... Um, how dense are these populations? At each of the six research sites, they identified the core population where the garlic mustard probably first took hold. And then they marked the satellite patches where it had spread. Each plant makes thousands of seeds, but they are not widely spread by wind or birds. At Klondike Park, the seeds were probably carried on the bottoms of hikers' shoes and mountain bikers' tires. And garlic mustard can be found all along the trails. So, I mean, the good news is, when you get something like this, and this is what we would call a satellite population. Right. Um, it's, it's actually pretty manageable when it's this size, and we think we could, it, with repeated treatment, we could actually get this to be eradicated. So here's the key question. To effectively control this plant, should you pull as many as you can from the core population and work your way out? Or should you start pulling weeds in the satellite populations and work your way in? We have six sites, and in, in three we're managing the cores and leaving the satellites, and in three we're managing the satellites and leaving the cores. So we have two different management strategies, and we're going to compare the two. With every weed-pulling trip, sometimes they bring out high school students, they pull thousands and thousands of garlic mustard plants, which they stuff into plastic bags. But just as important is the data they are bringing out, which is now stored in that little yellow global positioning computer. The bags of plants will end up in the trash. The data, that they are bringing back to Washington University. They plug in their handheld device and download the data at WashU's GIS, or Geographic Information System Lab. It's part of the Earth and Planetary Sciences Department, and its computers can generate and print out all kinds of sophisticated maps. Since garlic mustard has a two-year life cycle, they are only now beginning to see the results of the experiment. So you can see these used to be the two cores, but now these cores have expanded. Um, For Pardini that. and Professor Knight, their maps of the rise and fall and spread of garlic mustard populations will be a key part when they publish um, so their results. In its native European habitat, garlic mustard is widely distributed, but it has natural forces that keep it in check. But here in the United States, it not only runs wild, it also puts out a chemical in the soil that many native plants cannot tolerate. 
when you see a big patch of it, you'll, you'll maybe just even see the problem visually. They take over. They become um, a really aggressive dominant plant in the understory and they displace all of our native plants. So you'll get what used to be 50 different species of understory flowers and then you'll just have garlic mustard. Sometimes you'll see these beautiful butterflies. Um, you'll probably see them today. So these beautiful butterflies around the garlic mustard and people think, oh, that's great, you know, the butterflies are using it. Um, and actually not really. One of the things that happens, and it's really sad, is that butterflies will lay their eggs on it and the, and the eggs will hatch into caterpillars and the caterpillars will die because they can't live off the garlic mustard. So it's actually, the butterflies will use it, but to their detriment. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a plant that can really affect just the entire ecosystem. They'll be back here in the spring of 09 for final observations and then data analysis. They haven't drawn final conclusions yet, but from what they've seen so far... We actually think that if you focus on the core, um, that in the long term, those satellites will just keep getting bigger, and what you'll have is even if you get the one core under control is 10 years from now, you'll have all these new cores that you then have to control. You have so. the cut off the head and two more pop up. Precisely, yeah. Unless you're a park superintendent or a forest ranger, you will probably miss the publication of the garlic mustard study. But few would ever miss the plant itself if it were ever eradicated, although that's not really likely to happen. Yeah, that's an impressive plant. It's almost the washu study, though, may well lead to more effective control of this invader. And even that won't work unless you're in it for the long haul. I bet I'm done. One more. <laughs> I gotta go. Do you know how much that has to weigh? No, I know. Holy cow.